Hello, welcome to week four of the Thanksgiving STEM challenges. So far, we've built water transportation, shelters, and devices to gather food. The next task ahead for the Pilgrims and Wampanoag people is to create a sustainable food source. So they need to learn how to farm. And that is where Corn Cultivator comes in. In this challenge, students create one or more tools that help them do a number of farming tasks. They need to till the soil, dig holes, plant seeds, and then irrigate lightly. Before I get too far ahead of myself, let's take a quick look at the materials and the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You can click on the title now to see the cycle explained. Before you start the challenge with students, you'll probably want to review a few things with them in terms of vocabulary like till, cultivate, and irrigate. You'll probably also want to go through how the Wampanoag Native Americans helped the pilgrims learn how to farm. You're probably already aware that the soil in New England was not prime for farming, and so the Wampanoag showed the pilgrims that if you added two to three herring fish, it really made the soil more fertile. And then they would also use between four and five seeds in each seed mound. So if you want to stay true to the pilgrim's journey, then you want to do it that way. If you do decide that you want to have fish in with your challenge, um, I would suggest to either use paper clips or those little Swedish fish candies. So when you start the challenge, you can actually get the students um, started and they can be working on their tools while you prep the farmland. For farmland, you have a couple of choices. You can either do the challenge outdoors and then just mark off a parcel of farmland for each group, but that's always a little dangerous because you never know if the weather is going to agree with you on the day you want to do the challenge. So I prefer to use little foil tins. Um, again, I get them from Dollar Tree. And inside you can either use flour or soil or sand if you want. If you do it this way, when you give it to the students, make sure that you don't give it to them already evened out. So I like to give it to them in big clumps like this. Um, you want to make sure to tell the students that they're not allowed to shake it out to even. The tool has to do the tilling. Um, another thing you can do if you have older students and you want to increase difficulty a little bit is you can add um, like kitty litter, gravel, marbles to make the soil more rocky. You can also compress the soil down. You can even add a little bit of water to make it a little bit more um, hard and dry and cakey. Uh, by compressing the soil and adding some rocks, it does make it a little bit closer to the actual soil and it adds just a little tiny bit of difficulty. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick demo using this tool. The next step is to dig the holes for the seeds and you do want to have the students know ahead of time how many mounds of seeds they need. I usually choose between 12 and 16. Uh, if you are using the fish, then you need to place your fish in the mound, followed by the seeds. Then they need to cover the seeds. Finally, you're going to need to lightly irrigate. And so what I put in the criteria and constraints list is that it has to evenly and lightly irrigate the farmland without exposing any of the seeds. If any of the seeds do become exposed, then you need to go back and use your tool to cover them back up again. But let's see how this one works. Well, I found lots of places to improve on that irrigation system. It did not work well. You can see this side was flooded. This side didn't get any water. I used too much water in general. The seeds are exposed, many of the herring are exposed, and this has created quite a mess. Sometimes that's going to happen in your challenges, and you know, stay calm, be all right with it, because a big part of STEM challenges is identifying your failure points, fixing them, and doing a second iteration. And while it might not always be possible to do a second iteration, Try where you can, certainly have give students an opportunity to talk about what they would need to fix. So I would try to identify either ways to fix my designs or even maybe just start from scratch. And you know, even when I'm thinking about my design for the irrigation, even if it had worked, it would have blocked the sun, so it wouldn't have been a great choice all in all. You want to give students an opportunity to really analyze their designs in this way. Even if they're successful, there might be ways to make them better. And don't be nervous or scared. If a challenge doesn't go well the first time, they're not always going to. You have to think of it like a process, very much like the writing process. The first draft is not always a fantastic read, and the first design is not always a smashing success. If you want to measure results for this challenge, I like to record, have students record the number of tools they designed. So in this case, 
I would count this as one tool and then the irrigation as a second tool. And also they should keep track of the amount of time it takes them to completely prepare the farmland and irrigate it. As I said before, if you want to increase difficulty, make the soil more difficult to work with by compressing it and adding pebbles, gravel, kitty litter. You can also require that all of the tools be in one. So this almost hits the bill, but it doesn't irrigate. But perhaps when I redesign, since I didn't like my irrigation tool, I can find a way to maybe, maybe pour down off of the spoons perhaps. For extensions on this one, of course, you can continue studying the pilgrim's journey. Um, how did they farm? What kinds of tools did they have available to them? You can compare how the pilgrims farm to modern farming techniques now. You can extend on the idea of uh, parts of the plant, photosynthesis, how do plants grow, all of that. With all this, you have the basics, but of course there's always more, so check out the resource. I know I'm always thankful when I can get a little bit of time back in my day. This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the hard parts are done. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the corn cultivator materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find task card directions, examples, and templates as this resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Thanksgiving and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. This one is not for the faint of heart. It is a little bit more challenging. It does take a little bit of extra time for you to set up. It's going to be a little bit messier, but I think you'll find it's really worth it. Your kids are going to really enjoy it. It's a fantastic thing to do right before the Thanksgiving break. Next week, I'll be back with the final Thanksgiving challenge. See you next time.